Run it back nation. What is good? It is your boy DJ Swood. Run it back Philly. No frauds. No fanboys. No intros. Algo gang. Continue to do your thing. Give me 5,000 likes on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notification bell on. All of those things. All right. Thank you to everyone that came through the playback TV stream last night with my boys, Steph and Andy. Uh, run the East. Sixers fan, Knicks fan, Celtics fan. All talking shit once a week on Playback TV. Thanks for tuning into that. Um, I want to let you know I did have a 20-minute breakdown of the Sixers-Nets preseason game uh, that was taking seven hours to upload to YouTube because my internet was wonky at the time. Me being the genius that I am did not consider unplugging the modem downstairs and restarting it. So uh, I just gave up and didn't upload the video. So there's that for those of you asking, you know, where's your where's your take on Ben Simmons preseason game and all those types of things. Here's what we got to talk about. The standoff continues, but I think we're getting closer to know to, to knowing at least what the 76ers roster is going to look like once the season starts. And, uh, for all you Harden haters, you know, I never, I never said a bad word about James Harden at all. For all you Harden haters, you're probably not going to like this too much, but we're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to move forward with the best roster we have. Here you go. It is increasingly likely James Harden will be on the Sixers roster to start the season next Thursday versus the Bucks. We will be streaming that game live on Playback TV. Playback.tv slash Running Back Philly. Tune in. We're going to crush it this year. And the drama just keeps growing. So, you know, the game's... <laughs> Dame and Giannis. It is increasing, increasingly likely James Harden will be on the Sixers roster to start... Uh, the this, this season next Thursday versus the Bucks. The Clippers are still unwilling to include Terrence Mann or additional draft capital during talks with Philadelphia in recent days. Uh, it's completely polarizing that the Los Angeles Clippers will not include Terrence Mann in a trade for James Harden. Um, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George on the on, on the last year of their contracts can't stay healthy. You can make a championship run with all three of these guys, and if it doesn't work, boom, you blow it up. You got all kinds of cap space. I wouldn't be shocked if these reports are wrong and the main thing they don't want to do is include more draft capital. That's a take that I was thinking about this morning um, as I was listening to the Mix Match podcast uh, is that the Los Angeles Clippers gave up, I think, five first-round picks and a couple pick swaps for Paul George. And when they inevitably blow it up, because they will, because those guys can't stay healthy, it's not going to work. They're going to need some draft capital. You know, these guys are going to walk. They're not going to get anything in a trade for either of those guys on the last year of their contract with how injured they've been the last couple years of their uh of their careers um so the clippers are going to like no matter what they do even if they do want to trade for James Harden and go towards like making a run this upcoming season they 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 need draft capital for for the future and i wouldn't be shocked if it's not really even Terrence Mann holding up the deal but Daryl Morey wanting more unprotected unprotected first round draft picks and they're just saying, listen, we're not going to sit here and shoot ourselves in the foot even more so, you know, uh, for the future. We gave up so much for Paul George. If we want to get out of the situation, we want to keep our draft picks. And that also might say, how confident are the Clippers even that Paul George and Kawhi Leonard are going to be healthy? How confident really are they that a James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George thing could give them chances to win a championship, you know? Maybe they're over it already. Maybe they all they're already planning to let these guys walk at the end of the season and, and, and they're like, you know, we're just not gonna give up extra draft capital. That's a take that I think is pretty interesting to think about.
And in thinking about the fact that James Harden is probably going to be forced to return to the Philadelphia 76ers, um, it's still like, is he actually going to play? I mean, he's going to have to play. He's, he's going to be forced to play. He's not going to give up the money like Ben Simmons gave up the money. It is what it is. So, um, But Sham says this, while professional and engaged when present, James Harden has not attended any of the 76ers preseason games and has participated in just one team practice scrimmage over 14 days of training camp. Sources say uh, NBA show, Shams, whatever. So he hasn't even been at the preseason games he's only in, he's only participated in one practice this this tells me two things um the all like during the off season all of the like James Harden is going to make this hell on the Sixers or he's going to show up and be a distraction or he's going to do something to try to force a trade uh maybe he's going to like toe the line of like you know, I'm going to show up where I'm supposed to. Maybe they're going to find like the fine print in the contract. I'm going to show up here and show up there. Uh, but I'm not going to no damn preseason games. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. So maybe it could, you know, get kind of weird and get kind of uh, ugly as the season goes on. And as James Harden is forced to be a part of the 76ers team. Also this with James Harden only participating in one practice during training camp and not being at any of the preseason games, the 76ers are going to be forced to play with James Harden on the roster without any type of chemistry uh, that you would have gotten from him being a full participant at training camp or playing in these preseason games or what have you. They're going to be ice cold when it comes to the offensive system, the players having chemistry, and James Harden being, you know, a part of Nick Nurse's philosophy. So, you know what I mean? This is why I wanted to see them in the preseason. I just, it's like, now we got to go out here game one against the Bucks and Dame Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo, and we got to throw in. Oh, we just did this whole training camp with Nick Nurse. We just did this whole training camp practicing, and now James is here. We got to throw him in the mix. It's not a player that exactly fits anywhere, you know, with the style that he likes to play. I think James can fit if you really look at kind of how he played in Brooklyn when KD and Kyrie were on the floor, took a back seat. So maybe he just bucks up, plays the game, gets in where he fits in, plays in Nick Nurse's system, doesn't dribble the ball 90 times, doesn't complain that he uh doesn't complain that he, you know, isn't playing his style of ball or anything like that. Um maybe that does happen. Maybe a lot of maybes in this video. I got a couple comments throughout the offseason to people in the comments this one guy was like all you do is speculate every day. Do you have any information on this team? <laughs> Bro, it's the goddamn offseason. What do you want me to do? Break down a game that doesn't exist? Yeah, I'm speculating. Good observation, genius. Anyway, uh, maybe, you know, throughout training camp and all of the things that Nick Nurse is trying to implement to this team and the philosophy and the work ethic. Uh, I don't think, just from what I know about Nick Nurse so far, and I'm not, I didn't watch every Toronto Raptors game by any means, uh, but just from what I think I know about Nick Nurse, I don't think he's above benching James Harden. I think Nick Nurse is the kind of guy that, that probably took this job and said, listen, I'll take the job, but I'm not a yes man to this guy, that guy, the other guy. I'm going to do it my way, and and nobody's going to tell me to do it differently. I don't think Nick Nurse is above benching James Harden. I don't think Nick Nurse is above saying, hey, you were only in one practice. We have a whole offensive system that we've put together that you're not a part of. So you're coming off the bench, buddy. That's possible too. Maybe James would like that. Maybe James doesn't even want, he doesn't want to play for the Sixers. He doesn't want to play for Daryl Morey. 
Maybe that happens. Maybe James plays a limited role. Uh, I guess the last possibility is that James says, look, I hate Daryl Morey's guts for promising me a contract and then backing out of the offer because I sucked in the playoffs. We're going to leave that part out. But, uh, you know, I know that James has a good relationship with Joel Embiid. I know he has a good relationship with Tyrese Maxey and everybody. Maybe James says, I don't want to play for Daryl, but I'm going to play for, for my guys. And maybe he completely buys in, plays hard in within this system, which just from the, a couple of clips of that one practice, I think the team can be really, really good if James Harden buys into this system. If he really wants to play, you know, ball movement, catch and shoot, uh, move the ball type of offense, moving without the ball, all of those things. I think they can be really good. So maybe we get lucky, but who <laughs> Sixers fans getting lucky? Ha, ah, maybe we get lucky and James Harden buys in and uh, the Sixers are great. That's it. Those are my thoughts. There's my speculation for the day. The season's about to start, so you little dorks can stop complaining about me speculating. One guy's like, I like your game breakdowns, man, but but this ain't it. This There's no games. There's no games, bro. How am I supposed to break down a game in the middle of the summer? Somebody tell me. Me and RB discuss this every day, man. Um, we love you guys. We love those of you that show love on the YouTube comments. We love those of you that respectfully disagree with points. We love all of you that engage. But it is mind-numbing to read some YouTube comments on a daily basis. It is mind-numbing. Because a lot of them are flat out fucking stupid. And I was taking my son to school this morning. And I was sitting at a green light in the straight lane. All right. There's a turning lane on my right. There's a turning lane on my left. Light turns green. I begin to accelerate. Some jackass behind me passes me in the turning lane for no reason. These are the people that I would imagine leave these types of comments on YouTube videos. Y'all have a good one, man. We out.